For this episode of the Firebirds Fan Zone, we'd like to extend a very special thank you to our friends at the Classic Club for allowing us to record in one of their amazing banquet rooms while our regular set is being repaired. The facility here is breathtaking and the staff are absolutely top-notch. To be sure, this is definitely a golfer's paradise. Thanks, Classic Club. We appreciate you. The Firebirds Fan Zone podcast is brought to you by Kyle Garman Realtor. Whether you're buying or selling, whether for your forever home or that quiet desert vacation getaway, Kyle Garman and the team at Keller Williams have the experience and skill to make the process simple and convenient. Check them out today at kylegarman.kw.com. Our podcast is also brought to you by DesertDefenseLawyers.com, DUI and criminal defense throughout the Coachella Valley. The criminal justice system is scary and confusing, but relief is just a click away at DesertDefenseLawyers.com, where we've been keeping folks out of the penalty box since 2008. The Coachella Valley Firebirds are bringing the Valley closer together, and the Firebirds Fan Zone podcast is your weekly dose of everything Firebirds. If you have suggestions for guests or questions you'd like answered or anything you want to add, be sure to leave them in the comments. If you like what you hear, please remember to hit that like button for this episode and be sure to subscribe. So if you're ready... Here we go. Let's get into it. Three, two, one. Firebirds goal! In his 13th goal of the playoff. The captain, number 17, Max McCormick. Assisted by number 19, Cameron Hughes. Welcome to the Firebirds Fan Zone with your hosts, David and Kyle. Wow, that's pretty good. That's All right, we're rocking and rolling, dude. This is... This is how fast it goes. It's already been a week since our last recording. I don't even know what episode this is, I, but it doesn't matter. I do know it doesn't matter that this is an insanely special day. Dude, this is a good day because we've got a champion in the house. We got a Pacific Division champ in the I know, house, right? In Matt Tennyson. And listen, I'm so excited. Um, you remember Tenny talks? Well, she was on the other <laughs> foot now, so yeah, you're in the hot it's seat. It's on. I love it. But yeah. as always, yes. And we got, we're, mind you, it's going to be a little short because we're on borrowed time. He's got a plane to catch. Mm-hmm. Gracious enough to come join us. Yep. But first things first. Guys, thanks again for supporting the show. I'm going to make it quick because he does have a plane to catch. But you guys have been awesome. Um, again, my goal, our goal for Christmas, 300 subscribers. Let's hit that goal. But again, thank you for your support. Love seeing you out the arena. Keep coming up. Keep saying hi. Give the feedback. We're truly appreciative of you. Thank you guys so much. Now moving right along. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, all right. So you, I, I'm, have you seen the show at all? Probably not. I haven't, no. Okay, good. Well, I'm then. I'm not a big like social media person in general. Not I to worry. A, I have a private Instagram that I don't really use. Anymore, I know. So I tag yeah, you all the time. No, I, I know. I've messaged you a hundred times. I've not gotten yeah. one response. No, so I know. I, I don't, don't use, it's not I personal. Don't, I don't, yeah, it's definitely not personal. <laughs> it's I, okay. I had one of, uh, actually, Pipes was asking me the other day. He's like, Hey man, like I followed you like a year ago. Like, what's the deal? And I pulled up. I have like you're like, uh, over where is that? I don't. What is this? I just. Why are you I, not on social so much? I, I just never was. I ne- really? it was never um, something I, I was super interested. Other stuff I, to I do, felt, right? Well, it also just like felt forced to me. I was I was oh. always been just kind of like a little bit more private in my personal life, and I don't know. I just playing hockey and uh, doing other things. I All right, well, let's let's bust that privacy for a second. Yeah. We always start with, when we've got players or you know people that have been in around hockey for a long time. Take us back to the beginning, man. Where did you start? How did yeah. you start? Let you know who yeah. the hell are you? Yeah. So uh, I've had quite uh, an interesting childhood and and growing up playing. Um, I was born in Minnesota. I lived there till I was six. Uh, my dad's job, uh, he worked in retail management for a few different companies. He worked for uh, Dayton Hudson, if you know what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, do you? I out, do. Of the, I do. out of the Midwest. Um, he worked for Kohl's mm-hmm. uh, right for a while, just like headquarters, uh, merchandising sales. So we moved around a little bit as a kid. I lived in, so I was born in Minnesota, lived in Michigan. Where, where in Minnesota? Uh, Twin Cities. Right on. Um, Chanhassen, if you know that. Um, and then we moved to Michigan for a couple of years, Wisconsin for six or seven years, then California for 10. I lived in Northern and Southern California, That's right. LA, okay. Orange County. So I've, I've kind of been all over the place. You've got a good um, diverse. What's your favorite? Yeah. Um, Growing up. They're all, they were all very different mm-hmm. um, and different, you know, aspects of my childhood, I think. Um, yeah. Where'd you go to high school? Like what, what area? So I went to three different high schools. Oh geez. Um, oh, wow. I, so I, I was a freshman in high school at, in Wisconsin and that was my last year in Wisconsin. Uh, we moved to California, Northern California in Pleasanton and I did two years there and then I was in juniors, um, 
so I was I was moving around for that. So three different high schools, but I ended up graduating from high school from my California um, high school with all my boys from from California. So right on. So yeah, I've had quite the uh, the childhood, I guess, growing up. But um, being born in Minnesota, everybody you know learns how to skate on on the frozen ponds. And how that's old were you? L- let me guess, four. Yeah, three or four. I don't know. It's hard. It's <laughs> hard to it, uh, exactly remember um, when it was, but it was just like that's what you did. All the neighborhood kids would get together, and and the parents would you know shovel the snow uh, off off the lake, and uh, kids would buzz around, and, and that's just what you did. That's how you learned wow. how to play. So, when did you start actually? You know, I, I get I get tooling around on the you know on the on the lake, but when yeah. did you you know first put on Probably, the put on yeah. the uniform and. Yeah, yeah. W- when I when 18. I moved to Wisconsin, that was kind of uh, the more like youth focus, like where I, I really established myself as a, a hockey player, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was I was there from fourth grade till my freshman year in high school, and that's just kind of good same same group of kids, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, same group of kids, same um, youth program the whole time. So Arrowhead, shout out <laughs> if, anybody, if anybody's there. Um, yeah, so that was that was how I got my my start. And did you just know right away this was it for you? Um, no, actually, I, I played a ton of sports growing up. I didn't. I, I always loved hockey, but I was I always loved sports in what general. What were you playing? I played literally everything. Like I played, basketball, I played, baseball. I mean, football. yeah, like all youth, like through really? through my schools. Yeah, I played. What was your I, other sport that you were falling in love with outside of hockey? Um, golf was was a big one. I was a big tennis player because oh. of my mom. My mom plays still now. Really? Like almost every day, she's in like three or four different tennis leagues oh, and wow. that's that's not easy you know no. i've learned especially as you get older it's it's tough on the body it's, it's harder tough than people on the think. body yeah, yeah. no the knees probably and got, elbows and shoulders man i mean there's a yeah. lot going on yeah but she enjoys it obviously being here in the sunshine it's, it's yeah. hard to complain so <laughs> is she a four five she uh, she plays three five and four she's uh wow. yeah she's pretty good yeah, yeah she is i mean she's been playing her whole life basically wow so, uh, that's cool man. she's uh yeah so i played tennis growing up i still i'm actually gonna go play what are you play tennis before i uh i don't know i have three? no i have no clue <laughs> no i'm I, i'm pretty good i i don't want to toot my own horn we'll give but, you a three uh, and yeah, call it good yeah maybe sure. three yeah okay. maybe a three five i don't three, know oh, I, I love it i haven't played against uh anybody competitively like that for for a long time i usually just play with um buddies or, or my mom guys here, you know you're so. better than so you can you know actually i i prefer when when guys are better than me because yeah. sure it uh challenges it just you. yeah it helps like raise my game and right uh, i feel like i you know when you play with people that are i don't know i don't know what kind of tennis players you are but when uh, guys horrible? are just you know Less. throwing meatballs over the net at you yeah. you know it's a little harder to uh to play like a serious yep yeah. not competitive match i never but. could like i don't think i have the hand eye coordination for tennis I, I i screwed around a little bit but i worked in the country club when i first moved here and i, I had to okay. learn that culture and there is definitely yeah. they never play down no no tennis players will always play up no and they will they prefer not to play down yeah. ever it's just it's a it's a real thing uh and so I, I, i'd rather you know get my butt kicked uh, you can say whatever you want it's okay podcast, all right bro. i'd yeah. rather get my ass kicked by somebody go. that's better than me yeah um because then you personally walk because better, right? yeah exactly yeah. and i'm sure that was like that in hockey for you right were yeah. you playing up um a lot of times or were you playing with your peers you know youth youth for me was kind of just I was always a late bloomer in general for hockey uh, I was undrafted so um I just I don't know I just I played where whatever teams I made and and uh hmm. yeah I was never well, you played d1 in college though I mean that's never, yeah yeah no was it western Michigan well, right I just mean in general like yeah. kids nowadays are like getting drafted and going to these junior teams at like 14 15 years it's old ridiculous. and I, and I, I know. just I, I had imagine. no idea what I was doing where I was going <laughs> to college like I it was just uh again like a little bit slower developing uh okay. career for me do you think that helped do you think that gave you any kind of advantage because you got to develop more focusedly if that's a word uh go with it, go with it. maybe maybe yeah. i don't know it's uh i think though um back to you know other sports that i played i think that really contributed to um you know hand-eye coordination and sure. just learning different types of sports and um you know how to play and work with other teammates and stuff like that mm. so i think it's a an interesting dynamic now where kids get locked into one sport at such a young age I, can't be good, right? I mean, there's. I mean, what? Well, uh, who am I to say what's good or bad? But right, yeah. it seems like the diversity. You get more value in one thing by having. Exp- oh, sorry, by having exposure to so many others. I, seems like it would make sense. I think so too. And I feel like kids now get burnt out pretty easily. Like, 
when I was a kid, it was all seasonal sports, right? So you played sure. you played hockey during the winter, you played golf in the summer and whatever. Um, now I feel like it's a year round thing, even when you're a kid. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a lot more intensive as far as like the work and what's expected of kids. And I think that can mentally be a challenge for, for some guys. So um, touching on that, because uh, Rikes was in the chair. He, yeah. he came on here and he was talking cool. about because he's a young kid, yeah. you know, and he was talking about his experience being drafted, not having that additional pressure of being, you know, one of the highest draft picks. And so he talked about how those guys uh, literally a lot of times will get that extra pressure and, and it takes away from the joy of what they're doing. For sure. And, you know, I talked to my neighbor who uh, his son played professional baseball, okay. had a great career at it. And his daughter uh, was an Olympic figure skater. Okay. And so, you know, his mindset, and he still coaches, he's, he's 70 and he still coaches baseball. It's Sweet. amazing. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. That guy's awesome. I aspire to be him, but I'm going somewhere with this. And the fact, you know, would you then with the, with the people watching and listening, would you advocate that we need to be more careful with our youth around putting that much pressure and that much intensity in that year round sport? Like I'm, like you were saying yeah. on our kids, because of what it can do I think that I mean that's how I feel personally just because that was my experience I know you know times have changed now and um, it's very different but I think having the kid be able to experience a bunch of different sports and then deciding for themselves what is best and where they maybe fit in or don't fit in or what they like better mm -hmm. or not they might be better at one sport but like another sport better it's yeah. just that's the way it is so I, I think uh, yeah I think um, you know, I see, I have a lot of buddies now who do run camps in the summer for hockey. And it's just, like I was saying, it's, it's a year round thing now where you're mm. expected to do these things. And if you don't, maybe are you losing a step on the kid that was doing it year round? I don't know, but I, mean, but as a kid, I mean, should you even be thinking about that? I mean, for me as a parent uh, of a student athlete, I just wanted her to have fun. Yeah. 100%. Right. She was pretty good at it, but yeah. I just wanted her to have fun. Yeah. When you were coming up though. Um, you know, peewees and then, you know, more formal youth hockey and even into juniors, did you see parents that were just hardcore overbearing, you know? For sure. Well, yeah. hockey parents, yeah. so we've talked on oh, the show the worst, about this. Right? Yeah, we've talked about this on the show. Yeah. Uh, we multiple guests who sat there and the yeah. hockey parents are a different breed altogether. For sure. Because they assume they're all going to the pros. Yeah, I mean, I th obviously you want the best for your kids. Yeah. And I think, you know, maybe that um, comes into play sometimes where you're like, maybe a little bit overzealous on what your kid's doing or not doing or, or trying to be, you know, too controlling over mm -hmm. what, the you know, what they're didn't in. Make it, yeah. wanted exactly, the kid to make exactly. it. Yeah. Well, so. you, I think you get that in a lot of sports. I'm sure. Yeah. But it sounds like your parents weren't like that. Right? It sounds like they let you just do your thing and no. get good at, you know, all no, which benefited. Yeah, they were great. They just kind of let me do my thing and uh, decided I for myself what I wanted to do. Obviously, you know, when you as you get older, you have to make decisions on, you know, timing and you get to a certain point. Obviously, you have to decide. And, mm. you know, if you're good at one sport, like, is that the sport that I want to? Well, when did you on? when did you know that? When did you decide, like, OK, hockey is going to be my thing. Like, I'm not going to go get a Joe job. I'm, I'm yeah. going to go. This is what I want to pursue. Like when in your yeah. life did you do that? And then how did you mentally prepare for that? So, uh, I mean, it, it was my freshman year in high school. I played uh on the hockey team for my high school in wisconsin and i also played on the jv golf team nice. so i was i was kind of like i really want to play golf but i really like hockey and it got to a point where you know in the summers and during the golf season Ooh. there was other hockey things going on so i had to make a decision was i gonna pursue golf was i gonna pursue yeah. hockey and i think well, I, I think i made the right you did choice, a good job yeah, yeah. For I mean, sure. good job yeah, well, yeah, I don't yeah. know. what was the decider? who knows though what it was, was just my parents told me they were like, you just you have to pick one like it's we, you just you, flip you don't you just or? don't have the time. I, no, I was just more at the time. I was more passionate about hockey. I was sure. I was better at hockey. Um, I had more friends in hockey. It was sure. just, uh, you know, again, something I had been doing my whole life where so same, same as golf. Team but, um, yeah, it is. I was I was always more of a team sport yeah. guy. That's again, kind of like why I didn't enjoy tennis as much, too. Sure. I, I tried to play c competitive tennis like seventh eighth grade I think and that just like wasn't wasn't really for me kind of same with golf it's just 
I mean, you're on a golf team. You're on a tennis yeah, team, but, but it's but not But they're all really, playing their own games. Yeah. You just talk about it after. You're not yeah, exactly. you know, depending on one another for success. Plus, there's yeah. a bond. You know, everybody, for sure. the guys that, who sat in this chair, again, we had we had Cole, we, we had Reich, and, you know, everything yeah. they keep saying, and we'll get into this in a minute. And that other guy, who oh, Grant something. A Grant uh, F- Fury, 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 something Fury? like yeah. that, Who's yeah. That? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was always about the bond yeah you know and the, and the guys i could see especially like with grant yeah. you know he talked um oh and Riker did too but it, so did cole i guess but it, it, there's a look that you guys have about that camaraderie for it's sure. the guys it's not just what you're doing on the ice but it's everything outside of that as well yeah and it sounded like you guys had a great time in seattle yeah yeah we were actually talking about grand fear we were we talked about that um on the on the broadcast we were um talking about our success from last year and you know being in seattle forcing everybody to be close to each other Mm -hmm. we were all in a hotel in seattle yeah um whereas like guys now they all live all over the valley right so it's outside of the rink outside of practice outside of being together there it's a much harder you know guys might live 30 minutes apart and it's do you think that was the thing for you guys last year I think that was a piece of it. And then also the adversity of, you know, not being able to play at home for 20 whatever games it was and playing out of a practice ring for our first like four home games or whatever that was. So I think that piece of it, the camaraderie of, you know, going through those things together, um, it really helps uh, mold the beginning of our season. Well, ask your question, dude. Ask it. December 18th. Yeah. Well, I want to know before we get into that. Who was your roommate? For what? Uh, on the road? <laughs> on or? the road last yeah. year. Uh, uh, Jimmy Schultz. So Schultz was, was your roommate in Seattle while you guys were going through? Oh, no, no, no. We had uh, our own. Oh, okay. My wife was there. Uh, oh, cool. We had, we had one of our dogs. We have, we have two dogs. So you had your oh, own right private... Right. Yeah, yeah. Everybody had their own okay. own situation going right. on. It wasn't so like it wasn't we, like, you it wasn't were like a, with the guys. No, that's just on the on road trips. <laughs> on like, road trips. Yeah. Okay, so Schultz, like, and Schultz was your guy. He was my guy. Yeah, okay. and and Eddie uh, Whitcow. He was we. It kind of like it changes as you know, guys are either hurt or not on the trip, or okay. some guys get called up, and then Ooh. obviously your roommates change. But so, those okay. two guys were the consistent. December eighteenth. Um, you guys have been on the road. You've been living in Seattle. You've played in a couple different venues. I mean, I heard you were playing at. I mean, you didn't even play at Climate. Like it was, there was a lot of yeah. different. Yeah, we had one ga- one game at Climate. Yeah, which yeah. is like crazy. Kirkland to me. Ice Plex. Uh, or yeah, something, it, like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm from that area, so yeah. It's, yeah. it was kind of cool to watch you guys. You know, I'm here in, in the Coachella Valley, and I know like the I five corridor is like my home. Like I know okay. up and down, so wherever you guys cool. went, I was tracing you. Yeah. And I'm like, why are they not playing at the arena? But it wasn't my whatever. So December 18th, you guys finally get to come home. And you're there. What was that like coming? Because you, I was gonna, you know, we don't need to ask you what you thought of the valley because obviously you yeah. said you've been here and, and I know yeah. you, you know you got parent your parents hanging yeah. out here, right? Well, first yeah. night so, in your new house, man. What yeah. Was, what did you What did you that think was gonna happen? And then what actually happened? Yeah, I. So I think we got we got down here to start practicing like mid November. Mm-hmm. So we we were here for a good month um, out of the practice rink, and we had kind of seen the building and and kind of built up the excitement ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but absolutely incredible! Like nobody knew what to expect as far as the fan base was concerned. We didn't know, you know, who was going to show up if we were going to continue to be successful, if they were going to continue to get fans, and you know, obviously it's been amazing. We, we had a successful year and, um, seeing the sold out crowds, obviously yeah. it's one of the on best. Tuesday nights. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you get a lot of snowbirds here, which mm-hmm. is, which is a really good market. There's yes. a lot of people from Calgary, Vancouver, yep. Minnesota is a yep. big one. My, my grandparents have been coming here since the eighties, which that, is why my parents are now. That's so cool. Here. Yeah, I know. Um, we, we heard retired, that story so. and it's like, dude, that's awesome. So I think that is a big contributing factor to why there was so much um, attention on us. And obviously there's no other sports teams here. So yeah. it's a pretty natural fit. Um, so I'm not surprised, but obviously we had no idea what to expect and uh, couldn't be happier with, that, with how ener- it turned out. Yeah. That energy, what was that like for you guys? It's you know, honestly, you're it was warmups, you're, you're doing your thing, right? It's, it reminded me of uh, an NHL atmosphere, honestly. Really? It's, uh, and so honestly, cool. you know, not to, shit on anybody but uh, better than some nhl uh, oh you don't have to tell us do we know we, we watch the broadcast from Ooh. yeah other places and it's no not. he's saying better than the nhl some of the oh, nhl cities love yeah that. love yeah. that even more yeah at least as far as like the passion from the fans yeah. and uh 
just the turnout. I mean, the building is incredible. There's not many buildings, um, you know, that I've played in in, in this. It's league. special. It's it's really special. It's unique. They did yeah, a great job. They yep. they knew they were very very focused, very very purposeful. For they knew sure. what they were doing. Yep. Yeah, the, the Lewickies know. <laughs> it's not not <laughs> their pretty, first pretty rodeo. Yeah. They're yeah. dialed in. Yeah, pretty exactly. skilled. They're dialed in. When you step, okay, so December 18th, the lights go down, they, the hype video, all that, and it's time for you guys to come out. The flames are going. Yeah. You step out on the ice. You had not seen the crowd other than war. You had not seen the crowd. Like, what was that? What was that like for you? Just electric. It was. Uh, I mean, it obviously brought our energy up, and and we felt the energy from the fans. So we wanted to play better oh. and. Uh, and the better you play, the better or more the fans are into it. And mm -hmm. so I think feeding off of the energy from the fans and our excitement to be finally home. Um, you, like you said, you come out of the fire and it's just the crowd's going nuts. And <laughs> yeah. You got those red whatever. <laughs> the they're bang, banging together. Yeah, yeah, man. Got you got I got mine. Yeah. I got a yeah. closet full, yeah, bro. Serious. Come on. Yeah. It's, it. um, you know, I think that was definitely also an intimidating place for, for teams to come in. Because, I agree. Because they haven't experience that and they're obviously against that team they're out rooting for us yeah. and uh so it can definitely be an intimidating place to come in and um i think we took advantage of that pretty well 100 percent. yeah yeah what was the i mean we're going to jump around a little bit but yeah. what was yeah. clearly there was some kind of magic dust over this season but i don't know what it like what was it yeah. or what it was different. Can't even put your finger on it. Yeah, I mean, what, what was it for you guys? Uh, it's hard to say. Every every season is so different, and I think um, obviously the management did a great job of putting together the right players, yeah. and they they did their part to to put the right group of guys together, which is you know an art form in itself. Because you know every year there's so many different factors that go into who is on what team and mm -hmm. what makes up that team. We were very fortunate to not have a ton of guys going up to Seattle. Ooh. So we had a, the core of our yeah, team yeah. was very uh, strong and yes, consistent. I agree. Uh, whereas this year, I feel like, um, you know, Seattle is one not doing as well as, you know, probably expected. They've been dipping and, into the pool here quite a bit. And then and then they've had injuries, right? Yeah. So they're Ooh. they're dipping into our best players. Yes. And that's, you know, contributing to maybe less goals or, I agree. or whatever it is. So I think we were fortunate to not have injuries and not have guys going up to Seattle. So that mm. same core group stayed together and built that same camaraderie and um, consistency together, which uh, is very important. I'll bet, you know, most people probably don't know this, but – you had a pretty long and pretty storied career. You played for some good teams. You got some good NHL mm -hmm. time. So you've seen a lot of atmospheres. You've had a lot of different chemistries. Yep. What, what about, and, and I, for one, am grateful that, that we got to see you and be, and be part of this. What was different, though? I, I, and I'm not even trying to ask this, but like chemistry-wise, or what was different about this team than any of the others you've played for. And you've been, I mean, you've played for some legit yeah. big boy I, teams. But like I said, I don't, I don't really know if I can point one or two things out specifically. I think, um, like I was saying, I think bringing in the right group of players that have the right attitude mm -hmm. that, um, you know, are good guys and really want to work hard to be on a winning team, I think is a big contributing factor because I, the teams that I've been on that aren't good, which I've been on plenty of those, <laughs> um, you know, it's more about individuals and how can I True. better my career. And it wasn't as much a cohesive team mm. game. And I just, I don't know why, but um, we just came together and, and we knew so. that we knew that one that we could win and that we all believed in each other to win. So it I was, think that's a secret ingredient. It really, yeah. That that, you guys are playing for each other. Exactly. In that yeah. brotherhood through Seattle being yeah. on the road. Mm -hmm. I think in what you're saying is like there was no egos for sure. Yeah. It's a new team. It's a new situation. Everybody's it's all new for everybody. It's like kind of a, yeah. we're just going to go out and discover this thing together. And then that brotherhood through being on the road, it, it was like, it, I don't know. I call it lightning in a bottle. Yeah. It literally was one of those moments where, yeah, it, all the right ingredients have to come together at the right time for it to do exactly what it did. Exactly. And then, um, and then you guys, you know, you, you guys were so impressive. I think the thing that, you know, I really enjoyed watching, and I know Dave did too, and everybody out there watching this too is, you know, there's been so many great games that were played last year. Yeah. Overtimes. Um, it was all this bend but don't break. Yep. 
type of stuff oh that we saw God. and all those wins at home. Um, I'm not going to bring up what's happening right now yeah. well, because we'll it's, early because because it's so second. early. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not even black clouding any of this. I'm just saying, you know, from last season when we watched it, every game was amazing. We walk out of there just like, oh, my God, that was incredible. You guys had this uh, intangible to show up in the mo in the big moments. Yeah. Score the goal that needed to be scored. Uh, you know, shut it down. Joey did a great job of being that 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 solid goalie, shutting it down when it needed to be shut down. Like you guys just stepped up. Yeah. Like that was impressive to me. And and did you know that in your locker room? Like, and then that For became sure. part of that culture. Yeah, I think it was just the belief that we knew no matter what the score was, we were always in it. And mm -hmm. you know. I, I know that the second period this year is, has been a big touching point uh, for a lot of people, but, um, you know, we were down in second periods, two, three goals last yeah. year, and we're like, we're going to go out there and, you know, if we give our best effort, we have a chance to at least get to overtime and see what happens. So, and, and you guys did. And we did. Man, you did it so many times. You know what? And that's sometimes is just like the way the puck goes, too. We've that's had, true. There's been some bad bounces, obviously. <laughs> the, the game on Saturday – you know, our the goalie balance. goalie gets hit and bang yeah. bang it goes goes in, but we're we have the lead going whatever two yeah. minutes left in the game or whatever it was. But yeah, we were just talking about that before you got here. You know, it that felt more like last season, like the yeah. atmosphere, the team, the play, all of it together. I think, like you said, it was just a a weird you know uh, a sequence of events, and our sure. goalie goes down, and that you know the refs don't you know pick up on yeah. it. Like he's. Our goalie's injured. He's knocked out. Yeah. This guy's not moving. He's not even trying. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, we're not, not going to use this yeah. platform to but, yeah, yeah. say anything about that. But you yeah. on social media, you know how I feel about it. There's no <laughs> no mystery. Now that you're and I, I we're going to bounce back and forth, but all good. watching your team from a different vantage point now, mm -hmm. what are you seeing? Because I know in your mind you have to be doing comparisons. That's just natural. We all do. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing that is either different, better, not as good? What's it look like to you from your new vantage point? Definitely different. Uh, and like I brought up before, every team, every year is going to be different, right? So there's always guys, especially when you're on a successful team, there's going to be guys that leave, guys that go to other teams, guys that are unrestricted free agents that just uh, you don't sign the same guys. It's yeah. just impossible. And there's always then the guys that were draft picks that are coming in as younger guys that those guys need to get time. Those guys need to develop. And, um, you know, Seattle always wants those guys to be playing and developing. And for those guys mm -hmm. to develop, they have to play and they have to learn. They have to make mistakes. And that's just the growing process yeah. of um, the minor leagues. But the same was true last year, right? You guys had to make mistakes and the rookies the new guys had to do their thing and for sure i think th i think though last year we had more not established guys but mm -hmm. we were maybe relying less upon um some younger players to a newer team but not a younger team yeah yes yeah. definitely okay. and uh i don't know if that's a contributing factor or not but that's from what i see is just a different group of guys and like i was saying with the injuries and having mm -hmm. you know Potsy, Maxi, Studs, you yeah. know, you, you got some top scoring that's been missing from games in the lineup. And it sure is nice to see him up, though, yeah. It is, of course, of yeah. course. Yeah, and you want, you want the best for those guys, of course, because yep. they've earned their opportunity to go play in the NHL, and that's what everybody in this league wants. Uh, yeah. As much as, you know, we want the Firebirds to do well, um, the, we end, goal, the well. end goal is to play in the NHL. Absolutely. And, and so um, it's hard to you know, separate those two things because obviously you want to have a winning team and a successful team, but at the same time when, you know, Seattle needs players and those guys get those opportunities, they're always taking your best players, yep. right? Did you watch last night? Seattle, no, yeah. I didn't watch. No. Dude, Max had a fire in his eyes. Yeah. Like, I don't he, think I've ever seen. He wanted to be well, there. He's, yeah. always, he's always got a little fire yeah. fire to his game, yeah. so for well, sure. I think but at some point we're going to get him in the chair, and, and I want to look hope. him in the eye and have this conversation yeah. Yeah. one day, you know, because yeah. he seems like a different guy. He's a, he's a true competitor. Yeah, and, love uh, that. He, uh, especially, I mean, not only for the Firebirds, but oh. when he gets his chance to play um, in the NHL, like, you know, in here, he's going to give – 100% I've never seen all the him time. give less no yeah, yeah. exactly but I've never seen you give less either I don't no. I can't think of well I can think of one player that was inconsistent but the rest I'm not going to name him because it's going to hurt his feelings but um he's gone now <laughs> but all right man <laughs> sorry, all right no. man no it's um, okay but along that vein sorry to 
<laughs> of the lo- of the players that we've lost, who who who's the most critical loss to the team? But who's the most beneficial gain of new players? Like if we can spot that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a tough. That's you a tough a, question. Yeah, you played in the corner. Good job. Um, I would say probably two or three guys. Obviously, um, Dax is a huge um, loss as far as you know his puck play uh, as a goaltender is something that's pretty rare to see. Yeah, it's almost like having a third defenseman back there, being able to come out of this crease play the puck be I mean he's so dynamic with the puck as it's a goaltender cra- it's yeah. crazy you just don't see that so that's um well, he's always want to be an offensive player right like he was yeah he's uh, I mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in there yeah yeah so I think that that's a huge piece of it for me at mm-hmm. least seeing the team not not to say that our goaltending is is bad it's just no, it's not diff- at all. it's different and and being able to break the puck out and spend less time in your zone Ooh. yeah um you know that's a uh the best defense or best offense is a good defense because mm-hmm. you're not playing in your own zone. So yeah, right. um, being able to have somebody where, you know, the team dumps the puck in, the goalie goes back and stop it, can rip Ooh. it to the forward quick, and you're out of the zone. That's like, true. Yeah. Not spending a lot go- of time on If the goalie end. stays in the net, and then the DS will go break it out, and maybe it gets stuck on the yellow, and then, you know, it's a little 50-50 puck, and then you're kind of battling for 30 seconds, then mm-hmm. the forwards are tired, then they got to change, and then, you know – so it's just those kind of things that, um, you know, having a good puck moving goaltender really um, can change your your team. Sure. I think. Good um, insight. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Froden was a big uh, a big player for us. Yeah, I think uh, he doesn't get enough uh, accolades. I agree. For for yeah. what he's done, and then like he just he he goes off to Finland, gone. I think it was, or he went to, he went to Europe to go Sweden, play Sweden I think, to go yeah. play. Yeah, he was. But he was. I think he didn't get enough. He's a really good player. He's a really good player. Really underrated, yeah. yeah. But just a knack for scoring and, and playmaking. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Truzy, another guy that's just uh, – he was a, a big body that um, – He's a big drink of water, that one. A big See? body. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think it's just – there's it's hard to pinpoint one or two guys that, you know, every, every year. Um, sure. How about the new guys? Who, who, the new who, guys, who's got yeah. your Who's got your attention this year, new guy? You know, I, I always go back to like the D man and I, I really I really like Ottavinen. Um, he, he's a sneaky, like underrated guy that I think is gonna be a good player. Agreed. Um again, that's a guy that, that needs to develop mm-hmm. and he needs to play and uh but when I when I saw him come in last year, like you could tell right away he's uh very mature for his age mm-hmm. and uh a right handed big defenseman that's hard to hard to find a, a good player like that. So mm-hmm. I think um like I said, those guys need to get in and play, get that experience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there might be some growing pains, you know, for the first little bit. But once those guys, you know, start to establish themselves and learn, you know, how to play the pro game and maybe play more games than they're normally used to yep. coming, you know, from Europe, you're playing probably 30 more games a year, wow. mm-hmm. um, not including playoffs. Um, <laughs> 100 games. <laughs> yeah. Well, we played 98 games yeah, last man. year. And, um, I don't know what, because he played in Finland before. I think they probably play like 50 games. So, wow. um, that's a good one. Uh, obviously, like the the young draft picks, like Winterton. There. Yeah, he's got our eye. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of those players that um, are gonna need to step up and and perform. And, Agreed. Um, so I think as far as the new guys, Shorzy is uh, a guy on. with a ton of experience, he's a ton on. of NHL games, mm-hmm. and. Um, so if he can um, get some more scoring touch and, mm-hmm. and help the offense that way, that's obviously a big add to maybe make up for Froden or somebody that's, uh, you know, Fro- I think he had, what, 30 goals last year or close to? Like I, and I we're not even. I'm not a big stats and guy, I, I, think I, I know he had a lot. So. He, he had a bunch. Yeah. What you're saying is really poignant because a lot of, we got spoiled. We use that, sh- that, that term a lot on the show is, you know, we got spoiled by last season. And yeah. we're not even at December 18th yet. Yeah. It hasn't Ooh. even been a year. Yeah. And what, what, what we're working out right now, you guys were working out on the road and we didn't, even, no one was really paying attention. I'm not trying to say that in a bad way, but definitely you guys didn't have the attention of like what you have now. Sure. So when we're, when people are watching and they're seeing that and they're a little frustrated maybe because there's those, those, those expectations, lo- expectations are here, are here sure. and there's this growth, uh, uh, growing pains that we're going through a little bit right now. Like you said, guys got to get on the ice. Yeah. They got to get out there. They got to get that feel that continuity has to happen. Yeah. That happened in some obscure, 
obscure place called Washington State yeah. that nobody was really paying attention to, and then all of a sudden you show up, and you've already gone through that. Yeah. Now, again, we're not even a year into this thing. Like we're coming on it. Yeah. It's, we're gonna our anniversary's coming. coming yay. Yeah. But like you said, there's a lot of hockey yet to be played too. Yeah, I think there's been. I mean, this is my first time back since uh, since the end of the year last year, but. It seems like a lot of people are panicking about the home record, and I, yeah. I'm not exactly sure why because uh, they don't know any better. They don't right? know any better, but mm -hmm. but also if you look, if you want to try to compare where we were at last year to where we are right now, we didn't have like that good of a start last year. We Correct. were we were fairly. Wasn't it right about, right about the same? It's, that's what I'm y thinking. Your records were about the same. Right. Honestly, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, also no. I was looking up something last night because my wife loves data. She loves numbers. Here, here's a fun fact, but Driggs actually has a better uh, percentage than Joey did last year at this yeah. time. Yeah, I believe. I it. mean, Dr we're I mean, not. Driggs is an unbelievable goalie. I know that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's not like it, I, I, again we got spoiled from what we were seeing, and everybody I think is. It, and what I remember is a lot of folks didn't really catch on to about the playoffs is when they started to really, really pay attention. Sure. And obviously by that time, we're at, we're at max capacity. We're, we're, yeah, yeah. They, the, the, the pedal's down. We're moving. So they think that's, that that's was the, the whole season. Yeah. yeah, it's like, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. That's, like, that's not it. So I think no. that's why you're hearing some of that panic is For sure. they're assuming that's the play that's yeah. going to be continuous. And, well, it's not. Well, there's ups and downs throughout every season. Yeah. Like uh, there was times where we went on, a, I think it was a 10 game win streak or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then there was times where I think we lost like five, six, seven games out of 10. Yep. Um, and that's just, that's what happens. Like it's hockey. That's pro hockey. Yeah. And yeah. you can't win every game and you can't lose every game. It's just, you got to find the consistency to be doing the right things every night to put yourself in the best position to win. And I think the coaching staff does a great job of, um, managing, you know, expectations and also when people are saying Ooh. that you should be panicking, mm. like, let's just settle down here. Yeah. And that's, you know, part of also the leadership, you know, having Maxi and Potsy and, yeah, and nice. those guys to maybe settle, settle those uh, thoughts down and, and be like, all right, guys, like, look where we were last year. Absolutely. We still have a few games in hand this year. You know, you win those two games and you're right. You're still right in the top oh, yeah. three, four teams and, and anything can happen the rest of the way. So, right. so hopefully they'll get, we, uh, we collect, I'm not, we collectively will get that message. Yeah. Hopefully through this and through you yeah. that there's an understanding. It's going to be okay. That we're, yeah. It's going to be yeah. okay. We're not even there yet. Yeah. We're scratching the, the surface. Do the uh, Aaron Rodgers, the just relax. Yes. Just relax. Oh, the Aaron. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to go, go off go, left go, field go. real quick. Yeah. Okay. Because you're a Minnesota guy. Yeah. All right. And, but and you Wisconsin. were also in Wisconsin. Yeah. So where do you plant your flag? So uh, I don't have like a, an NFL team really be because I have been all over the place. I, and I played and lived in so many different cities. Mm -hmm. Like I played for Buffalo and in the Pagulas, like offered to have us out for all the Buffalo games. So really, I really just root for, uh, teams that I've lived in and cities that I've lived in. So, so I'm, unfortunately it's like lions, uh, Packers, nice. Vikings. Okay. Yep. Um, figured. Buffalo is a, is a good one. Um, but a big rivalry is Green Bay, is sure. Minnesota. So when you're sitting yeah. on you like Sunday yourself, and you're you, watching, you uh, who, who are you? People are so like, oh, you have to pick one team. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I, I just, I, I, <laughs> like, to, I like to watch football. Yeah. I, I, care, I care more about my fantasy team. I was just going to ask anything. you, do you do fantasy? Yeah, yeah so I've, I've been in the same fantasy league since college. Awesome. Um, wow. How so are you doing this year? almost 15 years i've been in the same fantasy league are you doing all right same guys uh i'm eight and five so i had uh, i had joe burrow and we we can play two mm. quarterbacks so i had joe burrow and richardson they're both out for the year yeah. so yeah. that's uh that's been a tough uh, tough go for me this playoffs year, are coming uh, up though so hopefully your record will yeah get you in the playoffs. i just signed i don't i need a quarterback though <laughs> and now it's slim pickings on the <laughs> how, waiver how deep wire, is your team so like is it like 10 10 12 12, 12 Ooh. teams Ooh. and it's a uh, a deep so yeah. i'm looking at like Sorry, Tommy man. cold cuts or uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever they're calling it. I love it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, there's been a lot of teams. Um, anyway, so but I love that. Yeah, because yeah, we do the same thing, and yeah. it's been a lot of fun this year. Yeah. I had to bench Mahomes. I brought Prescott up. He's doing oh, that. Yeah, fantasy wise. Yeah, fantasy wise. Fantasy wise. Yeah, be yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah, absolutely. Much to my sugar. My wife's mad at me. She's. We argued about it for a minute, but yeah, she's over it. She'll be okay. So. Um, 
Okay, we're out here. Uh, by the way, we're out here at the Classic Club. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is where we are. So we've changed locations. We've had... Um, had a, we had a flood at our usual place. Unfortunately. Our friends at Classic Club were yes. very generous. We should have said that from the beginning. I know. Very generous to let us um, record from here. So thank that's, you, Classic that's Club. That's what you're seeing in the background. Yes. And speaking of golf and retirement, yeah. you know, now we, we've already touched on what happened last season. You know, and, you know, the guys... You know, here's one thing I don't know if you really know. And you probably do. But... You know, one of the biggest things that a lot of the guys wanted to do was win one for you. Yeah. You know, that was one because they kind of figured maybe this was going to, you were coming to the end of your career, yeah. which I, maybe you can shed it, some light on how you came to that decision. Yeah. And, um, but they were really feeling like they wanted to win it for you guys. And, yeah. uh, you know, that was the biggest heartbreak for a lot of them, especially those younger guys. Riker actually was really, yeah. He was, he, he, he doesn't get emotional. The guy's, the guy's monotone. We get that. Yeah. And that's just his personality. Like serial killer yeah. style. But yeah. <laughs> he definitely showed a little bit of emotion when he talked about you. He talked about some of the other guys, you yeah. know, and wanting to win it for you. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously it's, it sucks to win or to not win and, and go out the way that we did because we were so close to go to game seven overtime. And um, yeah, I think a lot of guys knew that I was kind of considering uh retiring and uh i've actually been dealing with back injuries mm. um for the last three or four seasons so that's been a big contributing factor into the fact of why i'm not playing this year okay um and i yeah it's it sucks but that's sports yep. somebody has to lose somebody has to win and yep. and we happen to be the ones that lost and um you know obviously yeah i'm sure guys wanted to win for the older guys that and maybe it was their last chance but um it is what it is i i can't go back and be like oh what if this what if that sure. it's um that's sports and uh i've come to terms with the fact that we had a great team and um we built bonds that will never be broken and we that's built true. a a winning culture hopefully um for years to come so i think you know those those things might be just as important um as winning we, we've talked about it a lot just just between two of us mm -hmm. we've, we've talked about it a lot and we've talked about it on the show but and without trying to get all you know emotional and hallmarky about it that last goal now where we sit we were like you know from here to each other from from where that goal went in and the initial the initial you know, impression was like, what the, f what just shock, what just happened? Why are the, why are those guys throwing their gloves, you know? Yeah. And then you realize, and then the, the initial flood of anger and pain and remorse and grief and all that kind of stuff. But the way you guys came to each other mm. afterward, the way you consoled each other and supported each other and the way that Joey, who I am sure felt in some way responsible, though clearly that was just a yeah. bad bounce. That was so impressive yeah. and motivational for us that as fans, in my mind, it like, yeah, it sucks to lose, but I don't think anything bad happened, man. You guys, and I don't know if you knew this, gave us something so great that we never could have imagined. And I equate it over and over, sorry if it's getting old, to, to the first Rocky movie, man. If he had won the first movie, there would have been no sequels. Yeah. Right? The fact that he lost made that movie great. I think yeah. as much as I would love to have won, sure. that loss, I think, brought us closer together. Am I crazy, or did you guys feel even remotely the same way? I mean, I think we would have been even closer together. If we would have won. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but... Um, no, I think, uh, you know, like I was saying, it's it's never easy to lose, especially in that fashion. And I think, you know, we had such a close bond because of how the season started and how um, far we went playing 98 games together and going game seven overtime. Like you talk about that when you're a kid, just, you know, messing around uh, in the backyard, yep. like game seven, game one, like yeah. that's overtime. what everybody wants to, to play in those games. And I honestly haven't even watched that goal back I no mean, neither have we i haven't uh, well i ha in my mind i can still see it mm. yeah yeah it's in so well, my therapist is helping me with that yeah it's hard to yeah. even like Jack and Coke. think and remember what kind of emotions you go through after that and um you know you guys see it more as fans like to be able to watch yeah. you know how that kind of unfolded on the ice but obviously we were all super bummed yeah um, oh yeah and yeah just emotional that you know the season was over and we had felt like we had done 
enough to deserve to win. He did uh, oh, more than enough, and to then not win, it's yeah. you know, it didn't bit, seem like bittersweet, the right I guess, because you know you can look back and say we really did do everything that we could, Absolutely. and we we gave it our best shot, and it just wasn't. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, we're bummed that we lost, but yeah. we are yeah. still, and I think I can speak for a- anyone, any Firebirds fan are still so proud of each yeah. of you oh, yeah. and the lot of you together. Yeah, I think that's the conversation that in the off season that you probably don't hear and, and the stories like our friendship was solidified through the season. We didn't know each we didn't, o- we didn't know each before, other yeah. until okay. till yeah. last season and uh yeah, and then so we we didn't meet until December 18th. Yeah. Oh wow, okay. And yeah. he had a passion, I had a passion and then you know like most sections out here we've talked on this, but you guys don't really know that story and so that's why we love this show Ooh. because we get to let you in on our side of the glass, yeah. if you will. Yeah, yeah. You know. I think uh, just in general, the the response from everybody in the Valley has been just overwhelmingly positive. And, uh, you know, I think that gives us as players um, a lot of joy that, that we could provide that. And, um, you know, to be able to go to the finals and do that, I think it shows, you know, what kind of character everybody had. And, yeah. and to, to get that winning mentality established early on is is huge for a new team and a new franchise so you know we're we're pumped to be in the valley and we we love all the support we love the fans they're all no matter what if we would have won lost like they were couldn't have been nicer we were in it to win it man with you guys no matter what they were ride or die it seems like we were which is um well i mean which is what you're looking for as players because the teams that have fans that are you know, booing you when you're, you know, lose games. Well. It's just yeah. like my brain can't even. Uh-huh. That's that's yeah. that's not that's not what you want. Well, I mean, we were. That's why the date, like, when you guys got off the plane during the playoffs, and we yeah. welcomed you guys home. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just felt like it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Like we loved you guys. Yeah. And we do still remember, do. Do you remember that? Did, oh, of course. Like, what was? Did you even know we were going to be there? I think there was like some rumblings that there was going to be some fans there, but we didn't know. How crazy. What was How like? crazy. Yeah, <laughs> wild. I mean, um, super thankful that, you know, we have that many fans that were willing or wanting to, to come to the airport, you know, just yeah. to to see us. Uh, and, and it was not and, cold out, let me and, just tell you. It was and, a little warm. And, and, a lot. <laughs> but, and just show your support, yeah. which is, um, yeah. you know, one of the main things that, that we appreciate yeah. about all the fans in the Valley is just the overwhelming support all the time. And um, it doesn't go unnoticed. Well, and it hasn't gone away. Yeah, you no, know, for uh, sure. Nothing's changed. No, I'm not if, saying that it has. Yeah, which but is great. As no, far I know. As last no, season yeah, goes, I agree. It yeah, was. Yeah, it's uh, just, it's one of those things. But, um, so what are we doing now? Like, what is your? You, you were there broadcasting. You were on the broadcast How booth with Grant. Yeah. You were there with that Ev. Was good. And uh, yeah, what was that experience like for you? And you know, it was interesting to say the least. I I didn't really know what to expect. I only did one period, so I think maybe. Uh, if I give it another another shot, potentially yep. uh, next time I'm around, um, could be better, could be worse. Who knows? But are you gonna, are you gonna practice in the mirror? No, definitely not. <laughs> no, I just kind of go with the flow all the time. So um, yeah, it was it was fun though. It was, a, it was a good experience, and I think um, at least I think uh, fans like to maybe get some insight from different guys. I know when oh, Potsy, yeah, sure. we when do. Potsy was out last year, he jumped on yes. um, a few times. It was great. It just gives another perspective, maybe from from some other voices. that's how we feel fortunate having you sit with us and, yeah. and everybody else who sat there because that's part that's been the the, the nut of the show mm-hmm. has been to peel back the onion and you guys yeah. get you get to give your insight as to you know how it felt and looked like for you during last season this season yeah when you're in that broadcast booth you get to speak to what's happening on the ice what you're seeing yeah. different yeah. i mean we we pretend like we know what what we're talking about but yeah it's just, you say it strong enough with it, enough confidence yeah yeah you just you know but, you know, but we really yeah. don't we're, we're, we're yeah. faking it till we yeah. make it but yeah. Um, do you think there's a future in it for you? We'll see. We'll see where the actual like broadcasting side of it mm-hmm. um, goes. I don't know if like calling games is necessarily where I'm passionate, but I think um, I'm definitely going to try to be involved 
with the Firebirds in some way. Awesome. I would love that. I think uh, as far as like at least at the very bare minimum, like being around um, in the community and um, just helping out maybe with the youth programs. That's and, awesome. Um, you know, just staying staying around and, and helping out where I can. And then, you know, on the flip side, being, uh, being able to maybe help on the player development side work with some of the d men and that would be great depending on where all of these things go is kind of a what if um scenario yeah. right now my we have a house in new jersey uh, my wife works out of new york city okay and so being i'm not making money right now she, <laughs> she's the breadwinner and um so working out the scheduling and Ooh. stuff like we're we're not we have no plans of living permanently in the valley but obviously with my my family being here and I have strong ties. Got a place it's, to stay. It's Heck an yeah. easy, an easy back and forth kind of thing. So maybe working out some kind of schedule. I don't know. We'll have to well, that would be, I mean, have to be, see where that where cool that goes. Awesome. Here. Well, I mean, you felt yeah. the reception in the building when you were dropping yeah, the puck, yeah, right? Awesome. I mean, yeah. you're loved yeah. here. I mean, did you realize that like, you would become? I mean, I, honestly, you're kind of a a legend. I mean, you're you're one of the like because you were one of the originals and OG. You're already you're OG, OG man, and, and you're at that <laughs> stage of your career now where yeah. you get to now have impact on the other side of it. Yeah. And what better place than right here? I mean, my God, we're we're watching you guys yeah. play golf. This is exactly. your passion. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like I said, it like being this is a home away from home for me. I I've been awesome. coming here since I was one years old. Wow. Um, my grandparents, uh, had their first place in mission Hills in the late eighties. Yep. And my parents have been living here permanently for seven or eight years now. That's awesome. Um, so it's a definitely an, an easy and natural transition to, to come back here and help out. Um, so cool. So yeah. Did you ever imagine in all the times you've come visiting and whatnot, that you would be part of a thing that brought the people together. And that's not Never. just fluff. That's like, mm -hmm. that shit, that mm -hmm. really happened. Mm -hmm. No. And now you get to come back and give back to it. I mean, yeah. I who think gets that, that chance? I honestly... Never in a million years would I have ever expected there to be a professional hockey team here. <laughs> right, and, right. And then not only that, but to to go to the finals with that team in my last year. It's uh, it was very special, and uh, you know, obviously something I'll never forget. But uh, something that I want to maybe help continue to you know help future generations of players and and Firebirds teams to to have that success and know what it takes to win, know what it takes to prepare. And to get, you know, guys that are younger that, you know, want get their chance in the NHL to, mm -hmm. you know, be ready for that opportunity when it comes. It's so cool. It's so, it, it you is. have a lot of, you got a lot of hockey left in you. Yeah. Yeah. One way or another. And that's, I mean, that's, and I hope it's here, you know. Yes. Yeah. Hope it's close by. Well, if well, it's gonna be somewhere, it's it's gonna, gonna be. be here. I was gonna say it's not gonna be in Buffalo. There's no, nobody no. better <laughs> than like you said. I mean, this is your home away from home. So I mean, to be able to have that kind of impact, and you know the culture here, you've seen the For valley sure. grow, and it's yeah. only getting. Akersher and what you guys did brought more awareness to sure. this valley and yeah. more eyes are heading this direction. And I think this is more than ever going to be a destination spot beyond that. I agree. Uh, we're going to have more people all year round. Yep. Um, you know, in my industry, I'm watching that happen. You For know? Sure. And so it's, you're just another product of that. And I think getting in now and then creating legacy. And I yeah. think that's really kind of the end goal yeah, I yeah. Think for all of us. But I think for you, yeah, I, I don't, I haven't really thought that deeply about it maybe yet. I think <laughs> uh, I'll get there. That's, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Yeah, I, again, like coming fresh off, uh, unofficially announcing my retirement, um, you know, I just, I want to help in any way I can. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, being around the guys and, and trying to help, help them first and foremost be successful is, um, you know, where my focus is going to be at least Great. in the short term. And then, like I said, being in the community, supporting them like they support yep. us and doing you know whatever i can to help grow maybe the youth program i know you know there's some quiet talks about some more rinks potentially being built um That'd be nice. i know that that iceplex is very busy yes and uh so hopefully as you know that grows and hopefully more ice rinks uh get built and and we can create you know a destination like you said I think that's happening. And do you think he, so coaching might be in your future a little bit in, on some sort of capacity? You know what? I've never been passionate about being a coach per se, mm -hmm. as far as um, part of the reason also I wanted to retire is the fact that I had more control over my schedule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like that. Uh, 
not being able or not being forced to have to like oh i have to go to this city to coach oh, yeah. this team yep. or or whatever that is i i think you know being more around in palm springs in the valley i think that's would be more what i'm interested in as How far as you coach like well, that's kind of the same thing, though. Then you're traveling to yeah. different tournaments. Uh, Dude, yeah. it's just as and then intense. I'm, and I'm, probably, it's, probably worse. It's just. And right. they got the parents exactly. to deal yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not <sighs> doing that. I'm not doing that. I'll, uh, I'll help out wh- when I can. Or I don't know, you know, kind of how that would evolve. But, again, I'm not, at least in the short term, I'm not planning on living in the Valley long term. Or, you, like, or full time, I mean. Are you planning on doing another show? Uh, like, I, like, there will, there will like, be some more tennis talks. Uh, all right. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Oh, dude, man. I loved it. Cause we talked about yeah. that when we had Rikes here and yeah. so that was really cool. And, yes. um, what yes, a great there. concept. I heard that was part of your brainchild. Uh, yes, that was, uh, me and, uh, Piv, Evan Pivnik. Yep. Um, we were honestly just kind of bullshitting after a game in san diego i believe it was over a couple of mickle ultras no we were just uh <laughs> like post game we were just in the in the meal room um before we were getting on the bus and we were just kind of throwing around ideas for you know different media things and i i kind of brought up the like caleb presley style interviews mm. where um you know maybe it's a little bit more goofy and not as like a serious yeah. um interview thing which you know, I, I don't think guys really want to do like the, you know, oh, uh, we got to get pucks in deep. And, you oh, know, do, yeah, you yeah. know that's what I mean? I think like this is probably more fun than. Yeah, for sure. Know. I think that's sure. the niche of our yeah. show, too. Is For it's, sure. It's, it's we're not, not a, we're not trying to analyze games over God, here. No. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, that's kind of where the idea sparked from. That's and awesome. it was it was a little bit of an impromptu thing, whereas we didn't really have a great script for it. Um, at the time Neither for the first, yeah. no, but I, as far as like what questions mm-hmm. were going to be asked or, or the guests that were on, we didn't, I think we will do a better job of, uh, being a little more purposeful. Exactly. Yeah. Mapped out. Exactly. You're Although there was one it. question that always got the same answer and we're here. So and we're here. Dude, so bring it up. What's up? Let's go. Why won't anybody let McKinnon date their sisters? Can you say, <laughs> uh, you know what? You're going to have to ask him that. All right. Okay. All right. I, yeah, I, cause, well, because his daughter works here. The, the car girl. She's the car oh, girl yeah. out here. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I gave, I was giving, I was I giving know. McKinnon some shit. He's, yeah. a, he's a great Sorry, guy. So I, seems I, like a, I don't seems know. Seems like a nice enough guy. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe they're just jealous. I, I think know. everybody I was uh, also maybe saying like, I think we're going to set him up. So as yeah. Yeah, that, might that was going to be the repeated, the repeated question. So they're like, okay, we're just going to hammer him. Who I knows? Don't know. Who I knows? I don't know why. I, I love it that though. Was, that was the standard. I thought it was great though, for sure. And I love uh, your delivery. I yeah. loved, uh, you know, the whole concept was great. Your delivery was really, really good. Uh, having <laughs> Riker sit in yeah. a pool, Dude, whose idea and do was nothing that? but just sit there and be him. I don't know. I don't know exactly <laughs> who did that, but but we kind of tried to like take pieces from that show and that, that, that Glenny Ball is like eating ice cream. So it was like, how can just, Rikes just? Be looking like an idiot in the background. Nailed it. Yeah, yeah. I nailed, yeah it. nailed it. Nailed it. it. Didn't even practice. Yeah, yeah did it. it was no, good. No, yeah. he's a natural at looking like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. so perfect. Hey, <laughs> ask him. Ask him to find you a, a number uh, on a tape measure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know if you know that story. No, I don't. Uh, uh, ch- ch- look, I'm not trying to dog. The no, guy. Rikes, we love you, man. We love you, Rikes. I, I think you're just, no, I was just kind of an easy target sometimes. But uh, yeah, he can't. Really I love you, man. Measure. I do. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah, he's he good was, at hockey. He's so good at exactly. oh, hockey. Right. Yeah, that's, we, that's we, all he yeah. needs to worry about right that's now. That's all he needs to do. Yeah, exactly. we've been told that we should probably um, appreciate him now while he's here because there's a good chance. You were not going to. He's yeah. going to be up there. Gonna be much he longer. could be up yeah. there full time, yeah. um, which I'm not overly surprised with. But yeah. um, So we, I, I hate to be the guy that has to do this, but I'm looking at the clock. and I got, if, if you gotta, I got time. Oh, well. You got time? I got time. We were told that you were under a time restraint, and so we're trying to be very respectful of that. Yeah. What you got? Rock and roll, I, dude. Keep it going. Uh, Disregard everything I just said. Keep yeah, going. Good job. All right, uh, here's what, okay. Since we got time, I'm going to go back to this, right? It's probably not very widely known that you were the first Sharks, San Jose Sharks youth team player mm-hmm. to play for the San Jose Sharks. Yeah. That to me had to have been a surreal experience because yeah. I know that's what you must have been dreaming of while you were on their youth program. What was that sure. about? That was uh, an awesome experience uh, to play for San Jose. I um, yeah, I I played uh, AAA for the San Jose Junior Sharks and uh, 
played out of the same building that we had the our practice ring for Ooh. the Sharks. Mm. Um, so very, very cool, very humbled to uh, to have been the first one to do that. But um, yeah, it was uh, I was undrafted, so I was able Ooh. to uh, out of college be able to pick what team I went to. So I think. Wow the stars kind of just align yeah. um that way i think most people don't really get the opportunity to pick and choose where where they go so i think i was very fortunate to Absolutely. to be able to be in that position but um yeah amazing to uh to be able to play there uh, and obviously kind of similarly to here have a lot of the people know who i was and have friends Ooh. in the area because that's and that be was your home to pleasant and that was your home yeah town, it was so. yeah so i had a lot of friends that were still in the area and um yeah, it was just a lot like, of people asking for tickets. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not not yeah, asking, yeah. but more of yeah. me like being able to invite yeah. my friends, which is like that's the coolest awesome. thing. Ever, yeah, right? exactly, exactly. So similarly, like having my parents be able to come to all the games last year, it's like being able to have my buddies come. How to the emotional games there. was that when awesome. there you are, yeah. uh, December eighteenth, right? You got mom and dad in the building. Yeah, I'm assuming oh, yeah. at that they point, two most important people. Yeah, and they get to see you, and like that's our that's our your boy yeah and, yeah and you're here yeah like i was, think i mean for them um you know they're they're my number one fans for sure absolutely and uh just like any parent i'm sure, sure. um but it's been obviously playing professionally all over the country it's hard for them to see me live mm -hmm. uh they they definitely watch uh the live feeds and all that That's but cool. it's just not the same right you get to yeah. you have to wait till you know i was either playing in la or whatever city that they were oh, yeah. in, like reasonably yeah. close yeah because i mean other than the times that they would fly out to see me um the few times it's a year easy. it's just yeah. it's just not easy yeah. and I, I played on a lot of east coast teams um yeah. which is just makes it even harder so um to be able to play my last year in front of them yeah, and, awesome. and have them at at every game and yeah it was very special that had and to be emotional for them i and think so yeah all that. yeah super gratifying for sure and uh Got to live with them in the playoffs after yeah, my. Yeah, that's uh, so cool. Because uh, we, me and my wife rented rented a place, and then obviously we went went so deep Ooh. that I ended up. There's a um, lot of folks. Yeah. Um, ended up bunking up, new, bunking new up places back to at home. go. And yeah. It's a good problem to have, but all of a sudden, yeah, like exactly. everybody's homeless, and exactly. you're like, oh crap, where do we go? Exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah, very fortunate to to be able to have them around, and uh, again, it makes it even easier for the transition to you know, being able to help out with the Firebirds. I have a place to stay. When How I, when sick I come is here, that? So, yeah. I mean, dude, that's, again, I think you're one of those guys that, um, like, a, I don't want to say Tom Brady, but, you know, there's always those guys that have that, that. that has, yeah. a, has the horseshoe. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, like you said, the stars are aligning. It sounds like the stars have been aligning in your life in a lot of different areas because here you yeah. are. How many guys can say, yeah, I'm going to retire, and then, like, my parents live in, like, Th this perfect setting Paradise. with a team that you just got done playing for and you're like I can give back I can still be a part of yeah. oh and I can have home cooked meals whenever yeah. I want and a place yeah. to stay and like, the magic laundry basket come yeah, on, my, my dad's like, a really good cook too so is he? I love coming home what's, what's home. his go to is he a grill or is he uh, a cook guy no he's a like big recipe guy so really he, yeah he's uh he's one of the ones that asks you what you want and then he'll cook that for you what so, is wow. so when you at like when you're coming home like yeah, what dad, are you asking for what um we, so last night was a, a staple is uh risotto of some kind so he did uh mm. shrimp and asparagus risotto which is one Ooh. of my favorite uh dishes that he makes for sure so that was the last night but he does i mean so many things it's it's have you too many to to list out? See, he's a, he's a chef. Yeah, I he's mean, a chef. Because I mean, there's a gr like I grill and I can cook. And yeah. we've given cool. I can cook. we've I'm given shout outs to dads, yeah, you know, a lot sure. of times yeah, yeah, and moms, yeah. obviously, yep. but dads that are you know passing that along. But has he? What is? Has he I, part I would of say like I'm a I'm a pretty decent cook because of him. Okay. I, I I would try to help be be the sous chef when I sure. when I was a kid and nice. and just help out where I could. I think my um, passion for cooking is more like you grilling yeah i I, li I like to keep it simple though i'm uh as far as like how i eat anyway uh it's a lot of like clean yep. foods that doesn't need a lot of preparation necessarily yep. agreed um but he definitely um like if you give him a recipe it takes two three hours to make it sometimes wow, making you know, so different it's sauces and marinades of whatever. It's uh, he's he's, killer he's dialed. House. He's Ooh. dialed in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually out east for Thanksgiving Ooh. this year, but uh, yeah. No, I didn't say no you doubt. were there. I said it was killer. At your it house. is. It's it got to be. Yes. Yeah. yeah, always. Yeah. yeah, yeah, always. Well, so, I still yeah. say grilling is still an art form. People it is. think, and it is. poor Reichs, he's learning. I get yeah. it. I, I, you know, we it's an easy go-to, but you have a meter. 
I don't. I actually prefer the ones that are that have the little cord. Oh, because really? Because it'll the meter is uh, they overheat. It is a little fickle. It's sometimes. a little. They can yeah. Be. yeah. yeah. And um, so I like the ones that I I have one that like plugs in and I can yep. just stick it on a magnet. It's like twenty bucks. Like yep. Super cheap, but it works the same. <laughs> Do you smoke anything? Smoke anything? Yeah. Like, he means food. Uh, <laughs> I have a. <laughs> I have a, tr- I, I mean, I have a Traeger yeah. at, in Michigan. I don't particularly Dude. like to smoke things only because uh, I'm not particularly experienced in it. Okay, I'm going to tell you, that will elevate. Yeah. It, especially do a turkey. Oh, a yeah. A turkey. I'm okay. tell you right Keep now. yourself all day. All right. About four hours. I did a 20-pound in four hours. Really? Yes, yeah. sir. Um, but there's a, there's, yeah, there is, there's some processes there's to it. To, yeah. So off, after little, the show, I'll give you little some brine and the rest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you it's got, all about you, the yeah. It, it's all about yeah, the brine. Sure, yeah. You got to let it. I so have, good. I have done it and I have done it successfully. Dude. I think it's, uh, I don't have that Traeger full time. Okay. So I just don't take advantage of using it enough to have the experience to want right want to do it. The best investment I ever made, or my wife helped me get, I have I have the two in one. So I've got the pit uh, boss, okay. uh, I've got yeah. the smoker, and then next to it is the is the four burner. Okay. And it's an all in one. So it's and you know I got the two things going. I like I'm telling that. you right now, man. You know which one I and I have only had a short experience using this, but the it's like a Blackstone. It's like the oh, flat, yes. the flat I, top grill. That's another. Last year. Yeah. You like apparently, it? yes. Apparently, that's the way you're supposed to cook steaks. Right. It's exactly. another. It's a whole another yeah. thing there. Yeah. yeah you're exactly. Right. So you got to clean it before you eat. Like you got to clean yeah, it. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's the sh- your food's all cold by the time you. But eat no, you're it. right. Your family's yeah. all eating. It's, and you gotta, it'll open up yeah, your world yeah, to a yeah. whole different thing. Last yeah. show's the way to go. Agreed. So I think that's that might be my next purchase for for grilling or cooking purposes. But so the next honestly for for steak because I I'm a big steak guy, I I use the cast iron. I'm a big cast. Dude, iron that's cooker, old, school. So old school. Old school. Yeah. Some get, butter, garlic. Get, get a quick sear and then quick base to finish. Let's and go. I, I honestly don't really use a, a meat thermometer too often for that. I just, don't need to. Just you, just eyeball need it. It. you can go off time. I can yeah. touch it and just, yeah. I can honestly mostly go off just how it looks and t- timing of it. Uh, you you kind of just know. And uh, I'd rather eat it more rare than. I was going to ask you how, anyway. how, you yeah. do your, how you do your steaks. I go for rare. medium rare. But okay. If I'm gonna err, it's it's on the side of too rare. And every uh, I'm twitchy, I like it twitchy. Yeah, yeah. not me. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm a medium guy. I don't mind yeah. it bleeding. Uh, yeah. I'm a medium guy. Everybody saw on Instagram when they just recently did a, a post. They were all asked, oh, what you know, what like they, what they're, they're, yeah, and yeah. like I think ninety percent was steak. Yeah, steak, yeah. Steak, yeah, steak, yeah, yeah. steak, 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 which is great. Sure, I mean, yeah. I'm a that's that's yeah, I'm like you. I it, actually, I, uh, I, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I no, I'm totally with you. I think uh, you know if you can't put it on the grill and eat clean that way, then yeah. I don't really prefer it. I don't like a lot of extras. So. Yeah, so I uh, for the first time I bought uh, a quarter of a cow. From a, that is the best way to a, go. Yeah, from like a, a really like a regenerative grass fed farm it? that uh, is out in Jersey, and just bought like a hundred pounds of meat. What a difference! Throw it all in the deep freeze, yep. and then take them out. So them. It, the meat is the quality of the meat is so different. So much, so much better. Agreed. And then, and then you get like some maybe more unique cuts with it that you can kind of experiment. And they're with a lot and leaner cuts because you're sure. not getting it from yeah. the store. That yeah. kind of does charges yeah. by weight for the fat. A yeah. bit, yeah. It's yeah. a heck of a lot leaner, and yeah. there is a different and a, taste. And for the price point too, like yeah. it's like ten bucks a pound Dude. for for all of it. It was like a no brainer. Yeah, you yeah. go to a a nice store to get a nice grass fed steak around here. It's like $30, yeah. 40 bucks a yeah. pound. No, it's, or or it's just too hard to find. Yeah, yeah it is because it it's is. either you're going to Whole Foods or Bristol Farms or uh, the high end grocery stores that are all charging an yep. arm and a leg to to take. It's it not home, worth so, it. No, it's um, better to get it. Yeah, I agree. But to your point, they are leaner and. I, so the first time I cooked the steaks, uh, I absolutely butchered it. Because oh, you weren't used to. I didn't. Well, it's I not didn't. As fatty. I so. I didn't know until uh, until I fucked it up. I went back and saw that I was like, you, there's a different process to to do it. But I had cooked grass fed steaks before, it and I didn't. I was like, oh, I just cooked. What's it different? Like I get, I get the shit meat from the, Winco, so I don't. They just not that it's bad. No no su- disrespect to Winco. Link. No, it's <laughs> it's just it's much leaner, so mm-hmm. it cooks much quicker yeah okay. so you just you Got have to be really a, really attentive to uh Ooh. to how you're cooking it yeah. because you can overcook it very quickly quickly which i learned like learned the hard way the yeah. first time but 
haven't made that mistake again. Dude, get so. your tri tip, put it on the smoker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? I have a I have like it. a five pound brisket that came with it. So that'll be twelve hours I'll for that to, thing. I'll have nice to figure and out low a, and slow. I'll have to figure out a way to, to try to. There's some great YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Spots, dude. Yeah. I've learned a lot, but you can you can mess I that. I'm getting hungry. Look It's definitely you can, you can mess those up easily. Yes, lower. you can. So no, you got a baby, uh, and, and that's yeah. why the thermometer is so important. Yes, hundred percent. Sure. Yep. It's not about it's not about time. It's about temp. Yep. Always. Always. That's what I've heard. Always heard that. Time to temp. Um. All right. What's next? Well, you, before we started, you were saying you, you, you've been referencing your wife, but you just got married over the yeah. summer, right? Yeah, in uh, Congratulations. September. Congratulations. Yeah, thank That's you. That's awesome. Yeah, we got married in Portugal, actually. Uh, we were there for three weeks. We oh, did, wow. Um, we actually did uh, like a reverse. We did a pre-moon before the wedding pre-moon. Um, because we one of her best friends was getting married the next weekend. So we, we kind of did it, and we wanted to do a destination mm-hmm. wedding. It actually worked out perfectly because – Kind of as people were coming in to Portugal, they mm-hmm. met us somewhere else where we were and kind of made a little vacation out of it themselves. So it was nice. It was kind of just like a big trip with all of our closest friends and perfect. family. Oh, and so uh, perfect. I'd love so that. it was uh, zero complaints and I, I wouldn't have done anything differently. So, so how, how long I, you been together? Uh, almost eight years. What the hell yeah. took you so long? I was playing hockey. <laughs> <laughs> That's we, a good excuse. We had yeah. to we had to deal with a lot of you know long distance relationships. Oh, because she's uh, New York based, and she's working, yeah. and uh, I was working, and um, you know dealing with that, and um, yeah, we were just worked out the way it did, and um, so you're six super, months in, or so. Happy. How's it going? Yeah, we actually legally got married in February of uh, this year. Hmm. So because in, in Portugal, you can't uh, like the ceremony isn't anything it's, yeah, isn't official. Mexico's the same way. Yeah. So we did um, we did a small thing. Her parents came into town to to visit. And so we did a little uh, just a little elopement with my parents, her parents. And uh, That's cool. So. did the official thing out of California and then did the ceremony, actual like wedding Are celebration we, there. Uh, kids looking like they're going to be in the future soon or i'm hoping so yeah if we can yeah nice um I well think, uh, after the show i can tell you how it works yeah i know well i, I know, know how to do i'm just saying <laughs> i know how some to mechanics do i don't know there was a little yeah. like i'm not sure I, how. well i meant more knock on wood as far as like some people have harder times getting pregnant now that's so i true. just don't want to jinx myself no i i get um, it you know no. just keep trying though that's, i think yeah. well yeah, just that's a, that's a good yeah. way, a good just excuse. Keep, it, yeah. It's a great excuse. Yeah. We tried for yeah. a year, my yeah. wife and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It took a bit. Yeah. It does. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Um, so. so, yeah, I think uh, we'll probably try maybe this summer. Awesome. We have, we have some weddings and stuff this summer, so we don't want to try to yeah. get pregnant. Open bar, yeah, you got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we also just want to travel this summer, too, and, yeah. and have some fun and not have to worry about my wife being pregnant. And uh, yeah. she definitely doesn't want that that's either. So, um, and I, we... Again, not that we have a choice, but we want to try to have a spring baby if we can. So trying in the summer would well, just like us, hockey, you got to put right that time on, in, right bro. On track, yeah, you know, so, just saying. I don't just know. Saying. Just saying. We'll see. We 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 hope so. We have we have two dogs for now, which are um, plenty of work, and uh, they are they're like they're, kind of like kids. Yeah, a little bit. They were they were both puppies too, so they're they're kind of getting out of the puppy phase, and uh, it's a little bit easier now. But so. Um, with all that being said, you're going to start a family. Things are going to move forward. Do you think maybe there's a potential for you to maybe get a residence out here? It's, I mean, I know because we had touched on you getting involved in the community, yeah. doing a lot of things. You know a lot of the communities because of mom and dad, grandpa and grandpa. But, yeah. um, you know, is that a potential for you? Maybe have a second home out here, maybe one on the East Coast because I know she works. Yeah, but. yeah potentially. So yeah. Um, I have my lake house in Michigan, which is oh, cool. um, we're going to kind of try to do it as somewhat of a rental property Smart. Um, and see where that goes. Um so I think depending on how that house goes and kind of where all of these things kind of fall into place yeah. over the next couple of years, I definitely would consider getting um, another place. Me and my parents have talked about them potentially getting uh, a different place that would maybe have like some kind of like guest wing oh. or where it's not as much of like I have to maintain yeah. a house here or something like that or also have some kind of like other rental property where when I come into town, I can use it when we're not here. Just rent it um, out. You know, I know I'm, a great place with rentals on a lake. You'll love it, right? I just right five miles that way. Which one? Terralago. Terralago, okay. 
Yeah, All come right. on, I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. Know. Well, my mom's a real estate agent, so I tell her she is. She can definitely yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure to look. She can find find a place if if we're in the market. Yeah, I know. That's a that's a long way down the road. Yeah, though, you know, I, I was curious probably, because yeah. then that tells us, you know, obviously, and I think you will anyway that we've probably seen the community more and more. Like, yeah. See at Costco or something, yeah, just yeah, hanging yeah. out, you know, yeah. getting stuff for the weekend. Buying or, Traeger pellets. Yeah. You'll, you know, you'll, def- yeah. you'll definitely see me at Whole Foods. That's Whole Foods. or or Bristol Farms. I lived close to the Bristol Farms last year. So, all right. um, they know you in there when you walk in. Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, a couple of them did. Um, but Whole Foods is definitely it's closer to my parents' house. So awesome. that's, that's where if you want to try to find me randomly, I'll be at Whole Foods. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> you guys. Stalkers, yeah, yeah now you know. Out there, yeah. Whole Foods is the place uh, to go. Or Porta Via. Yeah. That's that's our. That's the everybody's spot, go-to, yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody, the team seems to yeah. enjoy that too. Yeah, we have a good relationship with the owners, and uh, great. they treat us really the well. Food's pretty good. The food's great. Yeah. The atmosphere is great. Good steaks. Um, yep. I love El Paseo, that area. Yeah, um, it's awesome. As far as like, I I'm not a big downtown Palm Springs. It's it's fine, but it's I I just prefer El Paseo. Agreed. It's, it's closer mm-hmm. for me for my parents and yeah. and for a lot of the guys. Like they live in La Quinta, so if we're gonna meet up somewhere, it's, it's probably El Paseo. Convenient. And there's not, everything right there. And you can walk up and down. Yeah, yeah it's they got shops and stuff yeah. there too. So yeah, it's, it's fun. a it's a good location. So it really is. Yeah, I enjoy it. I loved. Uh, one of my favorite go-tos is Tommy Bahamas. Yeah. Because yeah, you can yeah, just yeah, sit outside. You can yeah. look at the valley. They have great food, great service. I've always enjoyed it. Um, you know, Kitchen 86 is always my go-to yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, We uh, Jillian's is another one that I, that I like a lot. Know those owners as well. But yep. a nice place you can sit outside on that little Sullivan's little is a nice patio. little. Sullivan's go, is go nice. Go to the bar. Yeah, I've been to Sullivan's. Get friends the, bar, the, the bar oh. option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. They've yeah. got these, this Philly... Um, God, it must be lunchtime because we're like yeah, circling know, around, just circling bro. The food. Yeah, 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 Holy yeah. cow! But no, I agree. So I, I, I love it. I love the fact that, um, well, because you feel you're a local guy, and so we, I think this is the first time we actually sat down with with, with somebody with a local, local, with like a local, yeah. yeah so yeah. we haven't had to bring up too much of those. Well, where do you go yeah, to do this? Like and you know, yeah. what was your experience like? like you yeah. said you've grown up here. Yeah, for sure. I, there's there's a lot of good places to go. I, I think it's uh, pretty underrated, actually. Yeah. Um, some of the let's restaurants. Let's, let's let it stay underrated I wish, for a while. I yeah. wish some, no like, crowds. Not that I'm a big bar scene person per se. Mm-hmm. I just feel like there w- there's not a lot of good places to go out um, for like some of the younger guys. Oh yeah. Um, it's definitely like an older crowd, like like the nest. You're saying that's not a good nest. That's no. for the boys. Old, that's definitely an older crowd. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, which, they love them there. We do oh, go. Would. We do go to the nest uh, every heard. now and again. But one of my um, good friends is a bartender there. He's a, yeah. You'd see him. He's a tall guy. You'd recognize him yeah. immediately. And he's yeah. always there. But yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, and then like El Paseo, all the all the places close so early. It's true. So I don't I, I don't know nothing about no bar scene. Like yeah. we yeah. go to we go to the twelfth floor at Fantasy Springs if we want to have a night out because it's close to the house and it's our age group. But yeah, I where I mean, burgers and beer, not um, beer hunter. Like where does where does someone go at your? Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. That's just it. Yeah. I don't know. That's what you should look into. Just start in a bar. Oh, Tim's well. Tavern. <laughs> there Dude, you go. Dude, <laughs> what? There you go. Might, See? might have something. Cater, I, uh, cater I'm, to some I'm of the guys. I'm the rights to that name, so <laughs> you know, you got to pay up. Yeah, but you can cater to to what you're talking about. A place yeah. for the boys to go and maybe yeah. a little bit everybody else in that that genre. Yeah. I don't know if like I think the rules and regulations though are more the issue because if you go to Palm Springs, you, there's bars that stay open. That's true. I think it's more El Paso right. has a the time or yeah, the city says of like when you have to shut, shut down. It down. Yeah. We'll find you a spot. Yeah. India's becoming Although the new. Kitchen 86 stays open until like 1 o'clock at least, I think. I haven't been out there. I, well, I didn't even know they still had 1 o'clock. I was, I've been asleep <laughs> yeah. for four He's hours. He's a morning guy. Then. Well, it's yeah. more because like we need a place to go after a game. Yeah. If you want to grab a bite and a couple beers or whatever. This end of the valley does shut down yeah, a little early. early. It's a little I mean, sleepy. Del I mean, Taco. We go to Del Taco after yeah. games. Does that count? Is that a thing? No? Do they sell <laughs> beers there? They do not. Uh, do you bring your own. You definitely have to bring your own. That's I don't recommend yeah. it. <laughs> I don't, and, and I don't recommend it yeah. in general because no. the next day is pretty bad. Yeah, I agree. There's much yeah. better Mexican food out here than Del think? Taco, yeah. yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty yeah. sure. What's your go-to Mexican? Uh, you know what? Um, what's that place? Uh, the Blue Coyote? Or what is that? Is that what it's called? I'm not familiar. Something with that. it's in Palm Springs. Oh, it's an old old school place that I had been going since I, I was. A I kid. don't get out there too often yeah, to go eat. Yeah. Usually just to go hang out and do the touristy stuff, walk yeah. up and down the main. You know, uh, mole is a good one on El Paseo. Okay. Um, what's that other uh, hole in the wall kind of place in El Paseo? 
Javier's. I haven't no, eaten any Mexican out there. Yeah, I don't even. I don't know. know. I can't remember the name. I haven't of had it. any Mexican out there yet. There's uh-huh. a couple. There's a couple good spots. Okay. but Mole is a. It's like a little higher end uh, place. Good margaritas. So, I'm a I, I'm a tequila guy. So okay. tequila and wine. Tequila and wine, but not on the yeah. same night. Uh, sometimes. Oof. Depends on the night. Oof, that's a headache and a stomachache. I, I can only pick one. Yeah, depends what kind of wine you're drinking. If you're drinking shitty wine, you're definitely gonna get a hangover. Two buck chuck. That's no. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's not, not good. good. No. Yeah. no, no, no. Boone's Farm is not a no, good way to go. No. If it has a screw top, not yeah. so much. No, if you're playing slap the bag, you're gonna definitely get a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. <laughs> now I'm a whiskey guy, uh, and I, you know that's tequila I can do yeah. like when we're in Mexico. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I like whiskey. I like good tequila though. Same with wine. Sure. Because I don't I don't drink like a ton, but when I do, I like the I appreciate the. It good should be stuff. sippable, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sipping tequila. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. not I'm not drinking Jose? Like, tequila sodas. No, no, no Jose. <laughs> no. Yeah. Casadoras maybe some a nice little. Yeah. Higher end. Yeah. There's a like a good sipping tequila. Tequila Ocho is is a good one that I like. Um, I don't know. I like some higher end. You might have too. to start thinking about doing like what The Rock did and start your own brand. You know what? I, I'm not a fan of the the Terramana one. Well, you can start your but own. I, yeah, that's expensive though. Yeah, to, it is. It's an investment. Yeah, definitely. All right, maybe, I'm maybe, I'll, maybe I'll have to uh, to to field some investors. Right now, Tenequila. I'm just owning. Go. I'm just there getting my go. name. I'm the just getting my bids on all, all the names. Marketing guys. Tenequila. Yeah. Good job. It at the yeah. Tenny Tavern. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's the only place it. you can get it. Only place. Perfect. Except for all retailers and exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Only bar you can get it. Only at bar there. you can get it. There yep. you go. Love I like it. All right. Set, setting me up for my. Uh, what I'm. T- I'm. A, I'm a, we're trying. I'm an ideas guy. We're trying. Facilitator. Just trying. We're trying. I just want a. Permanent bar stool for myself. That's right. All right. I just want my own place with a plaque. I, I think I can we sit. Could, a booth. Done. A oh, it's a booth. booth. I want a booth like with it. a phone. A booth. I just like it. not that anyone would talk on it, but in the old days, like in the eighties and the seventies, yeah. you knew who was who when they when these guys had a booth and they had their own yeah. phone. There you go. That's yeah. what I want. Actually, this reminds me of another restaurant that I really like. Is Bar Cecil. Have you guys been there? No. no. Where's that? It's uh, it's almost to Palm Springs. It's kind of like halfway up one eleven towards bar Palm Cecil's. Springs. I don't. I, We've passed a, it, I'm that's sure. That's a good spot. Okay. That's a good spot. If you ever want to stop in there. They got good food, good drinks. Good, good atmosphere. Bar. Yeah. I like good yeah, really good. We should go. We should just take a night and go because we always end up at the same places. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my wife and I were like, oh, let's go to this crazy place of work. Or we could just go to our <laughs> usual. Let's go to the you know, trail, you, you know, know what you're getting. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I yeah. agree. Or the, uh, the Ritz Carlton. Have you ever been there to eat or have a drink? Not to eat. I was there for an event uh, once. It's, oh. a, it's a cool spot, though, yes. more than anything. Because it kind of like looks over. You go up the little hill. There. I have been there. Yeah, it's a cool spot. Yeah, they actually, they yeah. have during happy hour a great hamburger. Yeah. No, it's, it's really ridiculous. No, and you're right. I've gone is. out. Yeah, it's a cool um, spot. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's bougie. You know, it's yeah, it's bougie. Group, for which sure. I like, but it's yeah. not It's not arrogant But you can just bougie. you can just like sit it's outside nice. on that patio there which and I have. get like a casual lunch or yep. whatever. And, I love and it's a, the, it's a love good view. The view. And, a, and a, obviously a nice hotel. Yeah, so it's, it's so a, sick. It's a nice place to be. Yeah, I've been out there. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. It's a good spot too. We're going to go there. Let's go. When? When are we going? Whenever you want, man. Let's go. He's buying. Perfect. Whenever you want. Yeah, love it. I just called it. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's. Um, is there anything we missed, man? Is there anything else yeah. we gotta? Any any other subject to touch on? There's, you know, talked a lot of food. There's I mean, so there's, much stuff we could talk about. There but, is. You know. You tell me. I'll, I'm open book. If you want to know, know something. Uh, I think I covered. I did. You know. I, I think we're good. <laughs> I'll t- I'll tell you my last my last like hockey related question for you sure. is, what are you looking forward to? What are you expecting? What do you think the fan? What do you think we should? expect to see for the firebirds for this season what what can we look forward to do you think i'm hoping um some development of the younger guys uh because that's going to be like the next generation of firebirds or seattle players and i think you know like we touched on before you got to be patient with some of these younger guys that are coming in or stepping into Mm -hmm. to newer roles but i'm hoping that you'll see the same kind of evolution um, of the team and just relax. Yeah. Just it's a long it's season. Like it's, I'm, you know, firebird faithful. I'm, I have no, I have all the confidence. Like I'm not, I'm yeah, not worried I'm at all. You. I get, I'm you not know, I'll pace either. in front of the TV and, and yell expletives no. when I'm supposed to, but I have not lost faith. No. You know what? I'm, I'm very confident in the guys in that room. I'm very confident in the coaching staff. Um, they do a great job of preparing and, 
um, giving the right messages in the room. So I think I've, all the things are being said and uh, maybe patience is, is something that everybody has to, to take and, uh, you know, just wait for those guys to kind of come into their own and get that experience. And I, I think good things are, are, are coming. And now that you've passed the torch, what do you think you're going to miss the most? I think just being around in the locker room, you know, that's uh, one of my favorite things is is a practice day where, you, you know, you just come in, you shoot the shit with the guys and um, and, and that those are the things where you, you miss out every day because you yeah. practice more than you play. Mm -hmm. um, so those days where you come in, grab a coffee, you're, you're chopping it up in the locker room, have breakfast together. It's those little things mm -hmm. uh, of the days that, that I'm definitely going to yeah. miss, but Hopefully being back uh, yeah. and being around the guys a little bit more, I can, uh, you know, get that back a little bit. I think you will. Yeah. That's awesome. I think you will. Yeah. Rapid fire time? It is, except I have one question. Do it. Let's go. And it's been bothering me since, like, the beginning. And I have yet to ask a question. So since we've had our two players sit in the chair before, how do we get to the nicknames? Since what do you mean? Oh, yeah. I, I've always well, wanted to know. Are, like, I mean, they're o obvious, they're obvious, obvious but, but I mean, but I've always kind of curious, like, what would be Dave's nickname and what would be mine? But how do you guys get to, you know, you've and got. What was yours? I mean, I don't know what mine. I, oh yeah, mine is Tenny. Yeah, just Tenny. I mean, that's that's easy. a name just, abbreviation. I understand, Tenny, but I mean, Tenor, I mean, it's it's kind of just like a just, natural thing okay. with either your first name or last name. Yeah. Or, I mean, there's random ones that just get started out of nowhere. I, I noticed the IE or the Y or however you want to yeah. spell it, though, is at the end of, like, usually everybody's name. Like yeah, it's some Truzy, kind of... Potsy, yeah, you know, Maxi. Maxi, yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, like, Goose is... Oh, that's uh, easy. Like, Goose Double. Goose that's yeah. easy. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So it's just, like, I don't know. It's a, Are there any a, that came up that were just, like, unrelated? Um, people call uh, Riker Garth. Garth. Garth, middle name, yeah. middle name. Uh, I think that was very random thing that mm. it just someone know, it just, found out his middle name exactly, and exactly. Yeah. yeah, and then now and then now everybody I call still call him Garth. Garth so, really? Yeah. Um, Pipes is yeah. uh, is a is an interesting one. I don't know. It's it's very random the nicknames. I don't I don't think okay. it's. Uh, so mine would just be Kyle. I think that. <laughs> KG, you're KG, to KG, me. KG yeah, yeah, that's there, true. That's yeah. So it's that's, stuff that's like actually that. you, yeah, yeah, KG, yeah. Every time. Yeah. Dave, Davey, I don't know. Dave's. I'm not a, I'm Dave's. Not a, I, I, nicknames never really fit. Yeah. You know, we'll come up with something, man. We'll with get the boys to get together yeah. and there you go. We'll get you one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, and that, and that was my that. other, I, I don't know why that, that, that stuck and I just thought I'm going yeah. to ask the question, but yeah. I think I it was hilarious. Okay. So right, let's go. Let's do uh, let's you, You're somewhat familiar with this. Am I? Well, yeah. All right. On your show, you would rapid fire. You would end the, your show with a set of rapid fire questions for. Well, you well, had that was a, pretty much the whole show. Was yeah, rapid well, fire questions. That's yeah. true. You just you yeah. always had a set base. So yeah, I end the show okay with a set of rapid fire questions All that, right. you know, again, I I just call them like wiffle ball questions or nothing. But you know, don't think, just kind of answer the questions like and roar shock. Just yeah, first man. thing that comes to mind. It's not going to be. Not right. gonna be anything. Go uh, I'm it. not gonna have you do long division. Right. Um, what's your? Well, we kind of touched on this. What's your go-to food uh, at the uh, at the arena? Have now you, that you're not yeah, yeah, now fed you're, by the chefs. like from the from the arena. Acre yeah, yeah, Acre Acre from you, like the snack bars. And yeah, stuff? yeah, have you had? I anything? Haven't, haven't had nothing. Anything. Nope. Okay. Not even a drink. Interesting. Well, well now, it was only my first game. I know. On Saturday, and so. you didn't grab anything. I was I was too busy with uh, with that, and then I had to do the broadcast. I was like, I don't think I want to. Well, if you find yourself. Not working. Next time, next just time, at a I game. Will. Find us over at Buzzbox. Yeah. Okay. Drinks are on me. Drink, drink, drink. drink. Okay. Shit's expensive. Yeah. And, and then, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I I would recommend also Shaq's Big Chicken. Okay. Yeah. That's a great one. And okay. then mine. Everyone will catch me. I have the same routine, um, and usually between periods one and two, I'll go get the the popcorn. The kettle, okay. The kettle corn is. Oh, kettle meat is. All right. So kettle good. meat is. Yeah. yeah. All right. It is absolutely. Yeah, you can't like, you'll know. eat the whole bag all right it's ridiculous good. yeah it's well our, our chefs uh put together some pretty good meals that's what we hear that's room, what we so. yeah it's ridiculous you i don't know if i'll well. necessarily be uh going to the concessions to get anything fair but, enough uh, but if you do but no, if i do if you yes do. you know where to go they don't have any drinks for us though we Buzz box. Come on so the buzz box. Come and i think you know where we're located you've seen us on you know i have seen you guys over there yes by the buzz by the buzz box yeah can't we're easy to find yeah um, just look for the orange glasses and, yeah. the, orange and the orange suit. Yeah. And yeah. There you go. There you go. Or teal, depending yeah, on teal what depending I'm feeling like, or yeah, yeah, yeah. there might be something coming up in the near future. 
Perfect. Looking forward. No, no spoilers. That. Just saying. <laughs> uh, what's your go-to meal in the Valley? We kind of touched on that, but. Yeah. Number one choice. Uh, yeah. Number one choice. I just, I mean, I have to say Porta Villa because that was where I ate probably the most last year. Mm -hmm. As far as, it's kind of a mix between casual, but a little bit more upscale. They have like a, a wide variety of food. They food's have, really they good. They have sushi there. rolls. They have steak. They have, I mean, they have, they have literally everything. So I think uh, it is lunch. That's that's a good one. Good. Puerto Villa. Yeah. yeah, everybody seems to, all the boys seem to like that yeah. one too. All right. So when you were playing or, you know, um, what's on your radio come game day? Yeah. You know, what, what are you getting amped to? What is it that's, that's getting you juiced? What were you listening to? Um, I was always a rap guy, you know, I grew up, uh, kind of listening to like Eminem and, Eminem, uh, that's fine, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, rap as far as like, that's what we kind of listen to in the locker room. A lot of times really? is rap. I think it's more like the younger culture is more rap mm. focused. Yeah. Whereas before it was kind of like rock yep. and, uh, maybe like some EDM, like Avicii style, yeah. um, stuff before the games. Um, we got, I have a pretty wide a uh, variety of music that I like, but um, if I really want to get amped up, it's a good beat. Absolutely. I don't really care what they're saying. Yeah. It's, right. it's I'm more like, about... I'm that's, that's kind of where I'm at, too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if I'm working out, doing something like yeah. that. Like, that has to be playing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah so. it, it'll get you juiced for sure. Yep. That's awesome. Um, what's a treat yourself day look like for Matt? Treat yourself? Um, probably, like, in and out or something like that. Uh -huh. Some kind Strong. of burger. Yeah. Um, Animal fries? No, I don't like. I actually hate the fries at In and Out. I'm more of the the burger. I don't like the way they cook. double double. I don't like the way they cook their fries. Yeah, double double. Gr two grill two onions? double doubles with everything. Everything. Yeah. Do you get it animal style or do you nope. get just just regular extra sauce on the side to no grilled onions? Uh, no, just raw. Awesome. I like the raw onions. They have a little little crunch. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, no lettuce though. I don't do lettuce on burgers. That's yeah. That's a waste it's, of yeah. It's, yeah. Like, don't put a salad on my burger. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Um, are you a DC or an MCU guy? A what? <laughs> How many times am I going to tell you? It's fine, though, but yeah, that's, it's okay. Yeah. So uh, DC being Superman, oh. Batman, MCU, yeah. obviously, with all the Marvels. Okay. Um, so somebody asked us that question for, like, the Jumbotron oh. uh, last year. Like, you know when we do, like, yeah. the... Yeah. the Mm -hmm. the questions that i didn't know up. that that this was my and somebody said like are you dc or marvel and i was like i i actually don't really watch though like i've never seen any of the marvel yeah. movies but i but then going back after having like thought about it more because mm -hmm. that was kind of a rapid fire question when we were filming all of those things yep uh the original like christian bale batmans that's uh, oh, dude, the that's strong yeah yeah. Sure. yeah yeah so like all the batman begins dark knight yeah, dark knight rises series. those yeah, are those three job. movies are christian nolan if we're did talking Phenomenal. Yeah. So that's, well, so that's Heath DC? Ledger is Joker. Is that mean, DC? That's DC. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you're Batman guy. So that's my Batman, next question. Yeah. Who's your favorite yeah, superhero? Yeah, Batman, then, for sure. Because he's like, because he's not like a superhero per se. He's, he's a guy. He's more of like an everyday guy. So yeah. it can be, it's more relatable than like yeah. guys like flying around in a tight suit. Like, like Superman. Superman. Yeah. yeah. It's not, well, it's kind of like Iron Man, you know. He's I guess a, Batman wears a tight suit too, but. But yeah. for a reason, you know. It's not spandex either. Not yeah. Shot. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. All the gadgets are cool. Though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's exactly. like, come on, dude. And he's a billionaire. He's got a right. sick house, little. So he's just a regular guy. Let's go regular billionaire. Yeah, yeah, Lots yeah, of yeah, money in a cave. Yeah. That's where I, I like. I'm a Tony Stark guy because yeah. of that same yeah, I reason. Like, I like Iron Man. It's, it's the tech. Yeah. It's yeah. he's a regular dude. Lots of money. Charismatic. He's got it kind of going yeah. on. But yeah, he's got a lot of flaws. And you're like, yeah, I can really. If I was a billionaire, I'd be like Caribbean guy. That would be my superhero. I'd be like, that's that guy in the beach. That's Caribbean guy. Like that would be my. He can have more drinks than a single bound or something. No. That I, yeah. That I is you, bro. Yeah. I'm with that. If I was a billionaire, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what other profession than hockey, you know, would you have liked to try or done? Um, I was a, a business marketing major, so um, I never graduated college. But if I were to have not ever played hockey, I, I got to assume that I would have gone into – something within that business marketing field i don't i don't know i don't know what like marketing a tavern or maybe your own tequila something like that potentially yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well Put we know we know a guy is who, who's in a, a marketing company yeah we you might, know a guy if we you, might put you, you in contact if you know with anybody him. who uh yeah. knows we, we, how to make their own tequila oh maybe. well we don't know that guy but we, we'll find him okay we'll find you him, find him and we'll find yeah, him give him my number yeah, yeah. there you go 100 percent. yeah um last one what's your favorite curse word Uh, probably just fuck. 
I use that. The easiest one. Yeah. Covers a lot of bases. I, I mean, I just, it's like, what the fuck? Or, yeah. You know, like, that's that's a, always a good go-to. Yeah, yeah I think so. Um, it can be a noun, a pronoun, an adjective, yeah, you an can, adverb. You can you use just, it in yeah. a lot of different ways. It can mean a lot of different yeah. things. And you can inflect it in so many different yes. ways. Yeah. You can draw it, it can out. You can be happy. You can, can be sad. Yeah. Be oh, angry. yeah. Yeah, like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Or, what the fuck are you doing? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's very uh, versatile. Yeah, really Mom and dad, I hope yeah. you turn the radio down. We oh, we forgot the advisory. That's, that's right. No, yeah, they, the that's on them. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There you go. Well, this has Dude, been. Thank you yeah, so much. This man. has been amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, been we fun. always ask our guests, but did you have a good time? Awesome time. Would you come uh, back? 100%. Whenever you want me. Serious? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Done. Hey, maybe that might be something in the future if you, you know, we might be we'll looking just for get another a chair and you can just be part yeah, of the show. That would be amazing. Could be. Yeah. No, seriously, this has been yeah. uh, a lot of fun lot for of us. Fun. And thank you for being last minute. Of course. I mean, that, well, I mean, you say it so carefree, but I mean, for us, this yeah. means a lot. Yeah. And for our little if show, I, and no. we're if a I little can make it band. work, like, yeah. uh, it is what it is. Like, I have no problem coming to, to help you guys out. And uh, Appreciate it, it wasn't that last minute. Piv gave me a little bit of a heads no, up right for it. Oh, good. But, uh, well, I'll tell you what, then all the drinks you want are on. Perfect. And yeah. you definitely yeah. have a seat anytime you're in town. Yeah. Awesome. Um, We'll, we'll have to figure all that out. But no, you've been great cool. and so gracious to, again, sit with yeah. us and do this. And um, I know you got to go, but dude, I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, seriously, no, seriously, no, no, seriously no, this I, has I been, this yeah. has been a blast. Thank Shade you. travels back. And we got to get a go yeah. birds from oh, you. Gotta get a go yeah. or go birds. Go birds. Done and done. Go, go birds. birds. Go birds. And relax. That's and that's dude, a cut. That was so good. That yeah, was yeah, so, yeah. That was good. so strong. Well, that was fun. If you're enjoying the Firebirds Fan Zone podcast on YouTube, be sure to drop a comment down below and hit that like button. Also remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out when a new episode drops. The Firebirds Fan Zone podcast is available on Spotify, Amazon, Apple, and a whole bunch of other podcast platforms. So however you get your weekly dose of the Firebirds Fan Zone podcast, we invite you to share it across all your socials. And you can follow us on Instagram at Firebirds Fan Zone Podcast. And on Facebook, just search, guess what? Firebirds Fan Zone Podcast. The Firebirds Fan Zone Podcast is brought to you by Kyle Garman Realtor. Whether you're buying or selling, whether it's for your forever home or that quiet desert vacation getaway, Kyle Garman and the team at Keller Williams have the experience and skill to make that process simple and convenient. Check them out today at kylegarman.kw.com. Our podcast is also brought to you by DesertDefenseLawyers.com. DUI and criminal defense throughout the Coachella Valley. The criminal justice system is scary and confusing, but relief is just a click away at DesertDefenseLawyers.com. We've been keeping folks out of the penalty box since 2008.